have you ever felt stuck in this mental maze of right or wrong or that black and white thinking? And do you feel confused about how you can be open to new ideas without them threatening your beliefs? Well, today we're going to break down those walls of rigid thinking and explore how we can be more flexible and why we would even want to be. So tune in today for some tips and insights and this fresh outlook on how to navigate those really confusing gray areas of life. Hey parents, welcome to Fulfillment Therapy. Do you want to raise your kids better and have a stronger marriage? Are you up late at night researching marriage and parenting tools and self-care tips? Do you start each day hoping for deeper connections and less chaos, but it ends with family arguments and going 12 different directions again? My name's Kendra, wife, mom, therapist, and growth enthusiast. It wasn't until I discovered how to fulfill my unmet needs that I was finally able to show up as my best self, as a spouse and parent. I realized that by meeting my needs, I could more fully meet the needs of my family with more energy and less resentment. In this podcast, I teach parents skills like boundary setting, prioritizing personal needs, communication, and claiming ownership. Just like my clients, you'll be shocked by the improvement in your marriage, parenting, and personal life when you focus on fulfilling your important unmet needs. Ready to prioritize yourself so you can quit mentally throat punching people? Then grab those earbuds and head outside and let's walk and talk. Welcome back, my friends. Today we are on episode number 130, Breaking Free from Black and White Thinking, Navigating Life's Gray Areas with Flexibility. I really wanted to speak on this today because I work with a lot of clients that are very religious. They are often Christian, though not always, and many of them have the same struggle of this very rigid black and white thinking. And often, as we go through therapy, my clients discover that this does not serve them. It really impacts their personal relationships and their individual growth. Because when they can't get away from that, they find that they struggle in other areas like intimacy or openness to other family members with different perspectives and even having meaningful friendships when they are very fearful of anyone challenging their beliefs. And what ends up happening is that they are not very open to other perspectives. Now, let me be very clear in this example that I am not telling my clients, you need to be this way, you need to be this way. It's very important that they feel safe and that their beliefs and their values will be protected. Again, going right back to values, which is so very important. But what my clients discover as we work together is that they really can set some of those fears down when they learn how to protect their values and when they learn a few key tips to become more flexible in their thinking. And it's so beautiful to see how that in turn heals their personal life and their relationships. So let's get into that today. But before we do, don't forget to check out fulfillmenttherapy.org and explore all of our courses coming up soon for personal growth, marriage, and parenting. Those should be available by January 1st, but stay tuned because that will be determined depending on how quickly we're able to get that going. And we also have one-on-one coaching. Accountability groups are also going to be coming up as part of those courses, so stay tuned for more information on that and check out the show notes to find us in all the different places. We also release mental health and wellness content every day on Instagram and on Facebook, so if you're wanting a little more of a pick-me-up and some psychoeducation on how to take your life to the next level, then find us in those places, comment, get involved, and that will strengthen your personal life and your family life as you do so. All right, now on to black and white thinking. How can we break free from it? 
how can we navigate those gray areas with more flexibility? Let's first talk about understanding those rigid mindsets. I'm going to use a lot of analogies in this to help you see it through a different lens because part of the problem with that rigid mindset is we can't see another perspective. So I will be doing a lot of visualization or analogies in this particular episode today. So I want you to imagine looking through a world through a pair of glasses that only show things in black and white. So this is that rigid black and white thinking. It's like seeing everything as either right or wrong or good or bad, and there's nothing in between. This really can impact our relationship in significant ways, because when we're stuck in this mindset, it's really hard to see different perspectives or consider that there might be more than one way to look at a situation. This makes us less flexible and less empathetic and more prone to those conflicts in our interactions with others. So I know you might be thinking, well, that's other people. That's not really me. Well, think about your marriage. Think about your relationships with other people. Are you pretty hardened? Are you pretty shut down to different perspectives? Maybe that's a different political perspective. Maybe that's a different religious perspective. I have a quick story about this. I am part of a community of podcasters, and many of them are very religious and come from all different religious backgrounds. And I had one person reach out to me and aggressively tell me that my values and my perspective was not okay. And she was trying to be kind, but ultimately she didn't ask questions. She didn't get to know me. She very quickly went to hear some information to show you that what you're doing is wrong. And that shows this very rigid, narrow perspective where she wasn't trying to understand, she wasn't seeking to connect, it was just this very quick judgment. And I find that even as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I've done that before too, and many of my peers do that. Any culture does this in one way or another. I know I've seen that a lot in politics. I have some family members that are very dedicated to their political party, and it becomes something that is so rigid and cannot see the other perspective that it harms those relationships. So rigidity really narrows our vision and limits our ability to see the beauty and complexity of the world around us. It's almost like wearing blinders that block out anything that doesn't fit our narrow worldview. I kind of picture a horse right here. Are you wearing those blinders like that horse and you don't even know what's around you? All the beautiful things that could be. Again, you can still protect your belief system, but you don't have to be so fearful. Now let's talk about the roots of rigidity. You know how beliefs and understanding of the world evolve over time, right? Well, that's kind of like Fowler's stages of faith development. It's this journey But sometimes life can throw us those curveballs, those things that we didn't expect. And it's almost like storms that maybe damage our roof. Think about that in the sense of your beliefs. These experiences can make us cling to what we know and be very afraid to go outside because of that possible storm that might come and hurt us again. And it's like we're staying inside because we're so scared we'll be damaged if we go outside again our roof will be destroyed, or whatever it is. Now I want to apply this to marriage, for example. Let's say in your marriage, you grew up with these very traditional gender roles. And maybe the culture around you is shifting a little bit, but you feel very conflicted about that, because in your mind, no, this is the only way, this is the right way, this is how it was modeled for me. And there's this rigid thinking and being like, no, this is just how it is and we have to keep doing it even if it causes a lot of conflict in our relationship. Over time, if you can open your mind to recognizing that you need to be intuitively making decisions together because every couple has different needs and different personalities. So again, I'm not telling you it has to be different than traditional gender roles, but maybe for your relationship it could be. And just being open to that conversation, even just starting the conversation. Like, for example, maybe the 
wife feels resentful about having to cook all this time. Like she's never actually enjoyed it. And the husband doesn't even mind cooking, but they've always done it one way. And that's just one approach. Like maybe it is equal in your relationship and that's not an issue, but maybe it's in something else. Maybe it's in how you worship, how you read scriptures as a family. And maybe you're not religious at all. Maybe this is something else, like how you spend your free time or how you do chores in your family. Like how rigid is it? And has there been conversations around this to explore that rigidity and explore that black and white thinking and being more open to something else? A rigid mind is like this stagnant pond. I want you to just imagine that stagnant pond. It might look calm on the surface, but underneath there's no flow. There's no growth. There's no life. And when relationships stay like this, with that rigid mindset, maybe one or both of you, it's very difficult to have a flourishing relationship. Inflexibility is the hallmark of a closed mind. It's this refusal to entertain any new ideas or consider alternative viewpoints. And you can understand why this would be so hard in a relationship. Often in counseling, I see it being especially difficult for maybe one person. But both partners often have certain areas where they're very closed and very inflexible in their thinking. What is the reason for this? And how can we change that if there is that rigidity. Well, one of the main things that I found that really helps in counseling is healing from past trauma. I'm going to give another little analogy here. So healing from past trauma is almost like tending to the wounds, just like you would a garden. So when we allow ourselves to loosen that tight grip of maybe fear or pain, we make space for new growth. So again, think of that garden. When we heal, we become flexible and we're able to strengthen our roots, which anchors us more firmly in the present. It makes us more resilient and able to weather the storms that come your way. So maybe you're weeding out things that that past trauma, you're pulling out those things that no longer serve you and you're creating more space for a flourishing garden that allows those roots to become stronger and stronger. Now remember, healing doesn't mean the damage never existed. It means the damage no longer controls our lives. Now, how can we apply this to parents, for example? Well, maybe in parenting, you have this rigid discipline method and it's not serving your family. It's just causing bigger and bigger problems over time, especially as the kids get older and push back a little bit more. Maybe you can embrace empathy more and focus on strengthening that parent-child bond. Maybe instead of resorting to punishment, for example, you can approach discipline with greater compassion and curiosity and seek to understand the underlying needs driving your child's behavior. Just recently, I think it was just a couple days ago, I checked in with my daughter one-on-one. I often do this. I think I've mentioned this before, but I just said, is there anything else that I can do to be a better parent? I don't want you to have resentments that build over time. And then I find out about it in 20 years and we become estranged in some ways. Like I want to work on these things now and I want to take ownership for my part now. And she lovingly told me, and by the way, I built up that relationship enough that she knows that she can share things without me breaking down and making it all about me and feeling really resentful or anything like that. I really try to validate what she says when she says it. And she said, maybe just focus on what I'm doing well, what I'm doing right. And that breaks my heart a little bit, but I also recognized that's a pretty normal parent-child relationship to kind of focus on, okay, did you do this? Did you do this? And remembering that children need that five to one ratio. They really do need to hear that what they are doing, they're doing well and that you love them no matter what. And it's so easy to get outside of that. So I just validated that experience and I remembered to be less rigid, to be less focused on to-dos. 
I tried to be more empathetic and I tried to be more understanding. So how does this apply to black and white thinking? Well, in my black and white thinking, or like, I can be thinking, oh, this is how parenting is supposed to go. They need to do this. They need to clean their rooms. They need to do their homework. They need to do their chores. And getting away from what really matters, which is that parent-child bond and instilling that confidence in them. It's challenging my beliefs instead of nurturing my pride. And it's acknowledging that, am I exploring what I'm really afraid of here? And we could go into this for every example, but when we are really rigid, when we are really black and white, that just indicates there is a fear there that's not being addressed. And when you address that and explore that and work through that, you often recognize there's a better way. For example, you can set a boundary or you can communicate your needs, or you can learn to stand up for yourself. Rather than being so intense, so aggressive, so overbearing that your relationships suffer. Oh, another very quick story about this. I recently was told that somebody was talking badly about me because of my parenting, because it's less rigid than others, or maybe a little bit more laissez-faire. I like to think of this as a direct result of me being a lost boy. I know I've mentioned that several times, but I kind of grew up in Neverland in some ways. The good parts of me being raised, I was very free for a portion of my young childhood to explore and to learn about the world. And I loved that part of it. And so in some ways, I allow my children more freedom and more opportunities to do those things, to explore, to work through problems. And I am not a helicopter parent. I would say most times I go the other way. And I don't think that I'm too passive, but there are times when I can be. And when I found out that somebody had been speaking badly about me because of this and being judgmental and gossiping about me, that really hurts. And for a little bit, I wanted to nurse that wound of like, that's not fair. And then talk about them, because in my mind, this person is the other extreme. And really, I think that conflict arises because they're so much a helicopter parent and so, so involved that I can stay there and I can say, well, they're this and they're that. Or I can open my heart and my mind and my empathy and I can recognize you know what, they grew up with their own paradigms, with their own way of being raised that shaped their perspectives. Now I can judge them back for that, or I can recognize that my approach is not for everyone. And I'll be very transparent here. If you really want to stay in your helicopter parenting role, and if you want to stay in a black and white realm of thinking, I'm probably not the person that's going to resonate with you the most. Because in my own journey, in my own exploration of mental health and finding greater fulfillment, that cannot coexist. So maybe seek out something else that would resonate better with you. And that is not who I am, nor will I teach those things. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Going back to rigidity, let's talk about some tools for letting go of rigidity. Mindfulness very much helps with this. Also, challenging those rigid beliefs. This could be cognitive behavioral therapy if you are working with a counselor, or this can just be even tracking your thoughts, maybe journaling about it. Like, in what ways do I have this rigid belief, this rigid thinking that My family members or my loved ones have pointed out that, like, maybe that's too rigid. Or another way to say it is, what am I really afraid of and what rigid beliefs does it cause as a result? Another thing you can do is seek out new experiences and make friends with people with different perspectives. Now, this is not always easy. This is often very hard because it challenges your perspectives. But you can do it with people that are very respectful and loving. This has been very hard for me at different times in my life, 
but it's also made me a much better counselor, wife, parent. Even though I really struggled going to two universities with two very different political belief systems, I also feel like that was really good for me to recognize that there are very different perspectives out there, and both are important for me to consider. The same goes for religious beliefs. I am amazed at how activated people get by other perspectives. And I have found that the more that I've been open and loving and accepting, that there's been more beauty in my life. And my clients have discovered the same thing. I absolutely love interfaith discussions with people that's built on respect. Because then it's not about changing the other person, but appreciating the value of their perspectives and the good that they are doing in their sphere of influence. And sadly, I think that's something that's missing from a lot of church members and religious people, is tolerance and love and openness to other people. It doesn't mean it has to threaten your belief system. There's room for both. Just a couple other tips you can do is you can ask more questions without trying to change other people, and you can lecture less and give less advice, but just seek to understand. And maybe they're going to cross that line into being too pushy or making assumptions, and that's where you practice standing up for yourself and reminding them about your values and beliefs and how you want to make sure those are respected. You can do these things in very loving, kind, gentle ways, and that's an important part of growth and development, but it is possible. I'm paraphrasing Einstein here, but he said something like, the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. So are we practicing that intelligence? Are we showing that intelligence by our ability to adapt and change? And even, I wouldn't even say change necessarily, But be open to other perspectives without being angry or fearful or resentful. So how can we embrace that openness and that empathy? Just be open to those new ideas and those perspectives. Get curious. Empathy really is a practice. And we can practice being more open to different values and belief systems. I mentioned that with some family members that have very different political beliefs, but I have learned over time to appreciate those differences, recognizing it's like that pendulum. And maybe I'm on one side, although I think I've come way more to the middle. (laughs) Not that we always need to be to the middle, but that there are things on both sides that can help us become our better selves, our higher selves. Mohsin Hamid said, Empathy is about finding echoes of another person in yourself. Isn't that so beautiful? It reminds me of how judgmental and harsh I was with some family members when they made some choices that did not align with my belief system. And even still, it's a little hard for me to feel that what they did was right or fair. I'm not even saying that. But I've been able over time to let go of that judgment and those fears that I had. And instead, like this quote says, find echoes of them in me and recognize that we are all human and we're trying to navigate this life. And sometimes we make blunders and mistakes, but that doesn't mean they don't deserve our empathy. And that doesn't mean we can't be loving and open to them. And as I was able to do that, every time I talk about it, my eyes water up and I just think how much people suffer and how much they hurt because of our judgments, because of our rigid thinking, when none of us truly knows all of the answers and there's always space and we can take steps to make sure that it doesn't threaten our values and beliefs. And I'll talk about how to do that very briefly. So you can set boundaries that help you feel secure in your values so that you can be open to growth and change. Let me give you an example here. 
So in maybe a religious or spiritual setting, you might want to set boundaries around your personal beliefs so that you can create a sense of safety. For example, you might decline to talk about or discuss something that conflicts with your values while still honoring the perspective of others. I know for a lot of people, this could be something like gay rights or even in some cases like women's rights or feminism or global warming, like whatever it might be. There's certain topics that are more triggering. Abortion, whatever that is. Maybe you recognize that this is not a safe ground to talk about and still maintain closeness. So you can decline to talk about it, but make sure you're still expressing that you honor their perspective and that you value them. And it's something you might be open to in the future, but at this time you're not. And maybe at a different date, you can share why. So you could set up parameters about a conversation like that. Like maybe it's just sharing simple thoughts without judgment and asking for theirs in return. And if that can't be honored, that's not a conversation you want to engage in. Wayne Dyer said this, The highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. And even just reading that, I'm like, oh, there's definitely some things that I've rejected because I've been afraid of them. Spiritually, I was afraid that it would do something to me. And I'm not telling you to go read anti-anything literature. It's not that. But it's recognizing that everyone has their own interpretation of the world. And not shutting down because they're different from you. But seeing the beauty in their perspective and allowing space to have conversations to even understand what their perspective is. So in summary... I just want to encourage you to embrace that flexibility and let go of that rigid mindset so that you can have greater personal growth and those healthier relationships and even greater spiritual fulfillment. When we understand the roots of our rigidity and we heal from that past trauma and we practice empathy and openness, that's when we're able to cultivate this greater resilience and that authenticity in our lives. Remember, true growth comes from embracing change and remaining open to the endless possibilities that life has to offer. I just want to end with an unknown quote, and it says, The rigid mind is a fragile one, easily shattered by the slightest challenge to its beliefs. It's a house built on sand, unable to withstand the storms of life. My friends, Challenge that rigid mindset. Explore those fears that you have and open your mind to other perspectives and recognize that whether it's a faith journey or a journey of exploring our trauma or whatever it is, there is space for openness. There is space for flexibility. And that's where true collaboration and respect and empathy thrives. And this is where our higher selves emerge. Best of luck to you in cultivating that flexibility, that resilience, that openness. That's all I have for you today, my friends. I hope that you are willing to share this episode with others that could use this. Or put it on social media or give us a review. Because all of these things will make it possible for us to continue to keep creating this content to help you, whether it's podcasts or through social media challenges or other things, to spread those positive ripples in the world and to help people heal and strengthen those families. Thank you for your support and the things that you have done personally to help get the word out. Don't forget to email us or text us based on the information in the show notes and let us know what you want to hear about, what you want training on. And we will honor those requests, my friends. Take care and have an incredible, beautiful day today. And I'll see you back in just a few days. Hey. 
Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, chances are someone else would too. Would you take 30 seconds to share this with a friend who's looking for greater family fulfillment? And while you're sharing, tell me what you think about the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. It refuels me when I hear this podcast is helping you, no matter what your house or your hair looks like. I'll meet you back here every Monday and Thursday morning for more episodes. Until then!